All right, let's see if we can get to some more real quick before we get done today. John in Topeka, Kansas. Thanks for waiting. Hello. Hey, John. How are you guys doing? Great. Pretty, Pretty good. good. Good to hear from you. What do you got? Um, today I wanted to talk about the burden of proof because I hear atheists um, bring this up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you guys would, I'm, I'm sure you'd affirm that you have no burden of proof. You have nothing to demonstrate, right? It depends on, on what the actual proposition is. If, you're, you, if you are a soft atheist, weak atheist, non-theist, in the sense that you are not accepting the claim that there's a God, there's no burden of proof to not accepting. Um, the burden of proof is on the claim that there is a God. Usually, okay, usually the idea of a yeah. burden of proof is associated with a particular claim, right? And uh -huh. whoever's making that claim... You know, if they want to convince the other person, they have a burden of proof. If I was to say there is no God, that would be an assertion which would carry a burden of proof. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Matt would but be making a claim. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem is that saying that you don't believe is denying the Christian position that teaches that you do believe. It is rejecting it. I reject the, the Christian position, the Muslim position, uh, on all of their supernatural claims. I reject it because it but hasn't meant the burden. If you, if you, if it, uh, rejecting it, to, rejecting something, yeah, that, rejecting something is not the same as saying X is false. Well, well, it's not saying that X is true. Because right. if I say that you do believe in God and you say, no, I have an absence of belief, that would be saying my claim is wrong. So you'd be saying God no, is not No, no, no. My absence of a belief does not say anything about whether or not your claim is, in fact, correct or incorrect. It's about me you, not being convinced that it is correct. But but I but I was saying um, the Christian position is that you every single person believes in God, but they suppress the truth. Okay, that's not so, that, that's do you believe that, in God or that, do you not that, believe in that, God? That oh my God, that is not the Christian position. There's no such thing as the Christian position. There are versions of Christianity. Okay, that, that okay, for, can I finish my sentence? I apologize. Go ahead. There are versions of Christianity that would make a claim that everyone believes, or in fact, as Sai and others have said, everyone knows there is a God. Now, mm -hmm. there's no way for me to prove to you that that is false, but I reject it too. And I don't actually know that there's a God, and I don't believe there's a God, but until you can find a way to actually get into my mind, as long as we're talking about what I believe or what I know, you either have to take it at face value or flat out call me a liar. No, I'm uh, Well, my position is that you uh, are self-deceived, but in regards to what you said about that's not the official Christian position. Okay, I'll I'm, grant you that. Not okay. every Christian believes that. But you're still denying my position that teaches that you do believe in God. So your, your claim is that I believe in God? Yes. Okay. I, I do not believe that that claim is true. And I am, in fact, convinced that that claim is false because I don't believe in God. Now I can't prove that. You believe, I can't prove that to you. you. Who is in a better position to talk about the beliefs of a particular person? That person or some random caller on on a, on a telephone? Well, I'm not saying that I'm some kind of mind reader, but in the Christian position, God reveals certain things, and He has revealed that every person believes in, in Him. Prove it. So, in Pro regards to prove. What you said, how do you prove that God has revealed that everybody believes in Him? Because um, that's what he says in the Bible. What, wait Where? a minute. First Where? of all, how do you know that that's what God is saying in the Bible? And why do we give a shit about the Bible? Well, unless your worldview is biblical, your worldview is uh, incoherent. Well, no, it's not, but thank you for making an assertion. How many I, why, have... why is it that when I ask you to back up your demonstration, all you do is make another assertion? Well, you said, well, your first, your first claim was just... Uh, an attack on my position of the Bible, I understood. So you, you are convinced that every person believes that there's a God, and you are convinced of this because you are convinced that God has revealed this in the Bible. And my Correct. question was, how do you know that God has revealed anything? Okay, that's, okay, sorry, I misunderstood your question. And I would say that unless you start with the belief that God has revealed himself, you cannot rationally believe in anything else. Yeah, well, th first of all, you're not answering the question. You're going down this presuppositionless garbage yeah, but, mindset that, it, it, that, that, exactly, makes, but, that makes an assertion. In the entire history of the presuppositionalist movement, they've made two assertions, that their worldview can explain things and no other worldview can, and they have not even made the remotest attempt to demonstrate either of those. They are nothing but bald-ass assertions. And so that which can be asserted without evidence can be rejected without evidence. What's the evidence of that? 
What's the evidence of that? Yeah. We're not going to waste our time. So, That's the evidence. So <laughs> the position is based fundamentally on where the burden of proof rests and what the null hypothesis is. And so the null hypothesis is that we are reasonably, uh, we, we can reasonably claim that there's no connection between X and Y until such time as it's been demonstrated that there is a connection between X and Y. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you accept, do, do you accept uh, that? Um, uh, I didn't understand what that was related to. Well, that's a big problem if you don't understand the, the null hypothesis. How, do you, how are you going to establish a burden of proof if you don't understand something like the null hypothesis? All it says, but, but, all it says is you, th that there is no connection between X and Y until such time as it's been demonstrated that there is a connection between X and Y. What does that have to do with my, uh, with my claim that you believe in God and that you sure. deny that you believe in God and therefore have a burden of proof? Yeah, so there's no connection between God and existence until such time as there's evidence that God exists. There's no such tie between God, has God and a re revelation until somebody demonstrates that connection. That's why the burden of proof rests on there, because, because the, the, if we don't have that, then you get to claim that you're convinced that God revealed the Bible, and I get to claim that God revealed the thing that I wrote down last night, which says you're wrong. And okay, so, so, so under you, that situation, you, how do we figure out who's right? Um, do you affirm that the Bible is true in teaching that you believe in God, or do you not affirm that? If the Bible says, I believe in God, the Bible is in fact wrong... Okay, so then when you state that a position is wrong, that is stating something positively, which yes. demands evidence. Yes. And, and so now we have to ask the question... So and, you and, acknowledge we both have a burden of proof for it. Well, I have a burden of proof for that claim, which I already fucking oh. acknowledged a minute ago when I said, if I were to say there is no God, I would be adopting a burden of proof. If your claim is the Bible says I believe in God, I'm going to say the Bible is in fact false because I don't believe in God. Okay, so then what is the evidence for the claim that... The evidence the for the wrong? claim is that I don't believe in God. The fact that I can't show that to you and convince you doesn't change whether or not I am warranted in rejecting that. Well, I can state that I don't, I don't believe I exist. Would, would that be... No, because that's, that's, that is directly in conflict with evidence. So we're talking about two different types of things. One is whether or not I am actually convinced of something... And number two is whether or not that something is true. Those are two different things. You have no way of, of evaluating whether or not I do actually believe in a God. Well, the evidence that you do believe in a God, or in the Christian God, I'm not, I'm not arguing for generic theism, is that you, you affirm things that only make sense if the Christian worldview is true. No, that's false. Well, okay, so for instance, uh, you affirm objective morality or morality that is... Uh, independent of human beliefs, I'm sure. Uh, let, me, I, let me ask you a question. I hold a position on morality, that morality is tied to the facts about reality. My view on morality is not in any way tied to the truth of Christianity. Well, that's a, well, a statement. But you, you, what is your he, view of morality? He's, he's unpacked that a number of times on a d number of different shows. We can do that here, but, but let's pretend he's done that. We can, we can find the, the episode and you can go watch it. Okay, so let's go to logic then. The, no, morality talk will no, you, you have, <laughs> here, Here's the thing. Let's change the subject. <laughs> like, no, I, I mean, can't win that argument. Let's let's change the subject. So, so now you're gonna now you're gonna go down a road. Now you're gonna go down a road of something like tag, which doesn't get you to Christianity anyway. Well, that's another assertion. I haven't even laid out the argument. All right, answer me this: Are you getting ready to present the transcendental argument for the existence of God in some form? One of us has incredible predictive powers. That's right. What is the we can read your let's, mind. Let's, skip, <laughs> let, let's, let's, for the sake of just this moment to save space, skip right to the conclusion of the argument you're going to present. Okay. Therefore what? Therefore the Christian God exists. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to have to let you go through that because no version of, of TAG... Um, can get, get you to that because it's, it's it's like when people try to present mathematical arguments for God when there's no mathematical constant or variable for God. So go ahead, give me give me your best tag. Well, uh, the argument for the existence of God in relation to logic is that without God there would be no there would be no logic. Yeah, logic so that's a, that's a bald ass assertion that I reject. 
Well, then you're going to get to this objection, right? Oh, Christianity is sufficient. If any of your premises are wrong, then your conclusion is wrong. I don't care if something is sufficient. Yeah, I know. That's why, that's why I was going to already, already took that objection. Because that's yeah. the only one that's really used to get this argument. Yeah, so that's the thing. Something has to be both necessary and sufficient to demonstrate causality. And if all you do is assert that it's necessary, you've accomplished nothing. So what you're doing is running, okay. running around saying that my worldview is incoherent because I can't account for logic. Well, you can't account for logic either with anything more than an assertion. Well, well, the, the accounting for logic in the Christian position is that the Bible reveals that God is the author of all truth and God cannot contradict himself. I don't give a Bible. rat's ass about that because well, that's not a demonstration yeah. of fact. That is the assertion. You need to actually back the assertion up. Well, so you're my my left tennis shoe. My left tennis shoe is a necessary and sufficient justification well, is your for logical reasoning. Well, is your left tennis shoe universal and does it ever change? Yes, my or left tennis to... shoe. My left tennis shoe is universal. Okay, now you're just affirming nonsense because a tennis shoe refers to something that that's exactly what you're doing. You're affirming nonsense as well because well, you're I'm not, I'm you're affirming that it. that you have an account for this that you can't account for. Okay, so now you're going to the. So you're essentially saying I am, I am explaining something by something that we don't understand. No, well, I'm I'm saying you're attempting to explain something. You are in fact not explaining anything because, as we pointed out at the top of the show, God has no explanatory power. Why is that? Because we explain things, we explain the unknown in terms of the known. You don't get to solve a mystery well, by. You, you don't get to, you don't get to solve a mystery by claiming by appealing to a bigger mystery. I'm not appealing to a mystery. In my position, God has revealed Himself. So I mean, okay. I how do you demonstrate that? How do you demonstrate that God has revealed Himself? Because if you deny that, your world is nonsense. Okay. Thanks for your circular bullshit. Bye. So I would highly recommend that everybody look up uh, circular arguments um, because what what's happening here is. I'm convinced that God has revealed himself, and this serves as sufficient, just, necessary, well, perhaps necessary, but at least a sufficient justification for why reason is reasonable. Therefore, if you don't believe in God, you can't have a justification for reason, and then we can't have a conversation. Okay, but this foundational belief that God has revealed himself, how do you demonstrate that? And what was the answer? Because if it didn't happen, we wouldn't be able to reason. Well, one of us clearly isn't able to reason, so maybe you should go back to the fucking drawing board. <laughs> I've had this over and over again with Cy Tin Brigancade, who doesn't understand this stuff either. He's just parroting Greg Bonson and others. Um, this idea that I get to take the biggest issues in philosophy, that the brightest minds basically acknowledge we cannot, based on our current understanding, come up with an explanation for why reason is reasonable. We cannot demonstrate that hard solipsism is in fact false. And instead, we move on from those as foundational assumptions that reason is reasonable and that we exist in a world, and we live our lives on those premises until such time as we're shown to be wrong. This is where the null hypothesis comes back in. I am not living in the matrix until such time as somebody demonstrates actual evidence that I am living in the matrix, simply asserting that I must be living in the matrix because you believe that the people from outside the matrix have revealed themselves to you and that my worldview makes no sense unless I also accept that, you're the one talking nonsense here, not us. I don't believe that a God exists. I can't prove this to you. And it's incredibly convenient. And I get this smug crap from Christians all the time. I did a debate in Canada, me and Chris DiCarlo against two ministers, who asserted that God will reveal himself to anyone and everyone, provided you have the right frame of mind and your heart is in the right place. And, and I'm someone who sincerely sought God. I can't prove that to you. I'm someone who God didn't reveal himself to. I can't prove that to you. But if you come back, as that minister did during the debate, and suggest that I just didn't try hard enough, well, screw you. Because when Joe shit the ragman down the street has God find his car keys, and that's enough for him to justify his Christianity. And I spent years in prayer trying to fulfill my obligation under 1 Peter 3.15 and got no response that if there is a God, that God's a douche. That God is not doing what you said. He won't reveal. Oh, Matt, you have some secret sin on your heart. All that does is tell people about you. 
It doesn't tell them anything about me because you can't demonstrate that I actually believe in God. You can't demonstrate that I didn't try. You can't demonstrate that I have some secret sin. These are all protective measurements, uh, measures to make you feel comfortable about what you believe. Because you believe, well, of course God will reveal himself to anybody. Because if it turns out God won't or doesn't, because he either doesn't exist or he's very much selective, then maybe your personal revelation is all in your mind. And that's absolutely terrifying. So instead, you project these weaknesses on who don't believe what you believe. And my answer remains the same. I am unconvinced that a God exists because the claims have not met their burden of proof. And when you come back at me and tell me that it's a secret sin on my heart or that I just can't make sense or that I actually do know that there's a God but I am deceiving myself or deceiving others, make yourself look like the douchey God that you're believing in.